In 1956, Arthur C. Clarke's science fiction short story, The Star, clinched the Hugo Award. It made its debut in the pages of Infinity Science Fiction, a science fiction magazine, the previous year. This narrative delves into the cosmic significance of Earth, prompting us to question humanity's place in the grand scheme of the universe. Arthur C. Clarke, a notable figure in the world of science fiction, had a multifaceted background. Before dedicating himself to full-time writing, he had served as a radar operator during World War II. Over the course of his career, he authored more than 50 books and was honored with a CBE in 1989. The story's protagonist is an astrophysicist who happens to be a Jesuit priest. Recently, he led a team of explorers on an expedition to a remote star system, and now he finds himself in his cabin, analyzing the findings. This voyage into deep space has left the priest profoundly changed. He now grapples with doubts about the existence of God and the concept of an afterlife, all of which he keeps concealed from his companions. The story revolves around these existential uncertainties. The priest used to have unwavering faith in God's grace and mercy, believing that God was the creator of the universe, the stars, and our solar system. He also believed that humans held a special divine purpose, which could only be unveiled after death. However, as he sits amidst the stars, thousands of light years away from the Vatican, his faith is shaken to its core. If there is a God, he appears neither benevolent nor merciful. The priest chooses to keep his doubts hidden from his team, who often jest and question his dual roles as a scientist and a Jesuit priest. He maintains that there's a long history of the harmonious relationship between religion and science, contrary to what the astrophysicists believe, emphasizing the Jesuits' historical affinity for scientific pursuits. The priest proceeds to discuss his report and the reasons for his presence on the shuttle. He led the crew to the enigmatic Phoenix Nebula, a cosmic entity that had come close enough to Earth over 2,000 years ago to be observed by humans. However, in the grand cosmic scale, the Phoenix Nebula is rather unremarkable, consisting of a single dying star at its core. The priest pauses to contemplate the Jesuit order and envies the early priests who did not have to grapple with the existential questions that contemporary priests now face due to their ventures into space. He wonders if the priests of the past would still believe in God when confronted with the vastness of the universe as he has. As the shuttle approaches Earth, the priest dedicates his time to pondering his discoveries, particularly the Phoenix Nebula and supernovas in general. Supernovas are stars that outshine all others, and within the Phoenix Nebula, they occur sporadically every few thousand years. Historical occurrences of supernovas, such as in AD 1054 and 1572, are the subjects of study for astrophysicists like the Jesuit priests. The shuttle's journey takes them into the heart of the Phoenix Nebula, where the priest examines the remnants of these ancient celestial explosions. Despite the considerable time that has passed, these star fragments remain unstable, with their cataclysmic effects too slow for the human eye to perceive. Only specialized equipment can detect the tremors rippling through space. The priest grapples with a sense of despair as he contemplates the dying star in the Phoenix Nebula. It is destined to eventually burn out completely. However, what deeply troubles him is a planet on the outer fringes of the nebulous solar system. Although this planet is clearly devoid of current inhabitants, it evidently harbored intelligent life in the past. The shuttle's landing and the explorations conducted by the astrophysicists confirm this remarkable discovery. Yet, the priest's joy is overshadowed by the horrifying realization that something, or some cosmic force, reduced the planet's population to ashes, obliterating their civilization. The supernova within the Phoenix Nebula, with its intense radiance, proved to be the harbinger of doom for these beings. Finally, the priest ponders the profound implications of this discovery. A star from the depths of space burned so brilliantly that it was revered by Earth's inhabitants. This star was not just venerated, it was christened the Star of Bethlehem, symbolizing Jesus and the Christian faith. Yet, in a distant corner of the universe, this very same star brought about the annihilation of a planet and its civilization. The priest is left grappling with the question of why God permitted this to occur and what it signifies for humanity. His fellow astrophysicists pose the same question to him, and he finds himself unable to offer a satisfactory answer. He is left with the disconcerting realization that if God appears indifferent to the suffering of his people, 
Earth's existence may be similarly precarious. Humanity's significance is called into question, with the possibility that our worship of Jesus is based on a rational explanation for the star rather than divine intervention, leading the priest to question the existence of God. I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe thank you.